In this Throne and Liberty video, I bring you a complete guide on what you should be doing once you hit a level 50. Now there are loads of things you may need and hopefully within today's video I bring you a guide on everything you need to know. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ, now I'm away until the 5th of November so the videos you are seeing from October 20th are all scheduled but I'm still doing those Lucent giveaways in fact when I return I'll give away a multitude of these so yes if you want to win it's as simple as this drop a like on this video leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subbed the more I see you active on my throne and liberty videos the more of a chance you have of winning so good luck everybody okay so once you hit a level 50 and finish the game's main story the game basically opens up for you to go out and create your very own end game build but this requires you to farm your ass off. Now this video will tell you of no shortcuts like using a Lucent and the auction house to buy traits etc etc. I will explain gameplay methods of you to go out there and farm your own. So first things first, when you unlock or reach a level 50, you will notice many many new things do indeed open up for you. But that doesn't necessarily mean you need to jump head first into them. I don't think you do, there's no rush. Now if you haven't once you reach a level 50, make sure you join a guild. There's so many benefits to joining a guild in regards to rewards you can get like guild coins used at a guild merchant who sells some quite useful things. These you may want to be buying on the daily too but yes there's very very useful things in regards to joining a guild and what comes with it. So yes if you ain't in a guild already make sure you're joining that guild people. So at a level 50 there's other things you should be doing too. These are things you probably should be doing on a daily especially on the weekly so there's other vendors in this game which you definitely want to be talking to and checking out because they have limited gear which you go by on the daily and weekly refresh mainly the sundry's merchant who has his allied resistance forces contracts uh, this we'll talk about later on in the video due to the materials you get from these being vital materials used for leveling and more but these are definitely something you want to be picking up for sure and then more or less work out your amatory and those expeditions uh, the more you do this the more it levels up and the more loot you get it's a great and simple way to yet get easy and vital materials you will indeed need for that progression so yes make sure you go to that amatory hideout that amatory house send these little bad boys out on those expeditions level them up and get that free loot this is something you definitely want to be doing and taking advantage of now there are other merchants and other places you should be visiting on a daily, nothing massively important but by now you run around and checking out everybody I'm pretty sure you know of these by now. So you are probably at the stage now we don't have much epic gear, especially if you've just hit a level 50, which is fair enough 99% of players were the same. So you are probably at a stage of wanting those epics which is cool. Now something I feel is important and that is the fact that fully leveled up blue rare armour it's probably going to be better for you than low level purple epic gear. The fact with rare armor in this game is much much easier to come by. That means the traits on it are easier to infuse into other weapons or armors or accessories. It means like uh, leveling up that rare armor is a much much easier process. So if you have fully maxed out or if you have decent blue rare armor that is great and it works with your build decently enough. Although chasing epic gear is vital. I wouldn't say using that epic gear as soon as you get it over that blue just because it's one up in rarity is the right thing to do, it really isn't. Powerful rare armor is much much better to use in my opinion than low level purple epic armor, especially if it suits your build properly, which is what it's all about in regards to endgame in Throne and Liberty. So work towards getting that rare armor, work towards leveling it up first before you substitute it for that epic gear or even infuse it into it which can be a mistake in many many instances. So yes epic gear may not make you stronger right off the bat so yeah keep that in mind. But either or you're probably looking at easy ways once you hit a level 50 to get that epic gear. Well there's quite a few ways and we'll talk about it. First up precious epic chests. So doing contracts in this game of any kind uh, resistance contracts, the allied resistance forces contracts, they reward you those contract coins. Contract coins then can be used within the contract coins merchant to purchase a variety of different things but mainly a precious epic chest which will reward you then an epic weapon of your choice. It requires 150 contract coins though which may seem like a lot but it really isn't if you know where to look for these contracts 
much like the watch's post contract merchant he has contracts that give you 37 of these contract coins per completion which is really really good you can also use the sundry's merchant to buy like i mentioned the allied forces contracts which rewards you tons of contract coins but you also get those precious blessing pouches too per each one you do indeed complete now you can get 26 of these contracts per week each giving you this pouch which can drop those epic items you can also purchase these pouches from the ornate coin shop with those ornate coins too also when completing these allied resistance forces contracts guys each one you do indeed complete gives you that abyss currency one per contract now gathering 40 of these you can then purchase an epic chest from one of the crafting vendors to pick another epic item which is cool weekly missions are also an easy way to get an easy epic piece now here there are challenges for guilds open world the co-op dungeons and pvp completing these will reward you a choice of a random epic now the more you complete the more of a chance you have of getting that epic you may indeed need in here too you can see some requirements meet the criteria of being useful in other ways as i mentioned earlier those mystic keys uh, you should definitely be picking up on a daily which will also result in you getting an epic chance here too besides the actual decent loot you'll get for going to those mystic portals and collecting gear from them at the same time you can also get epics dropping from the open world dungeons too head here in a team make sure you have those abyss contract tokens head down into these open world dungeons and farm away now if there's a certain piece you are after head into the crafting tab select and look for the item you're chasing and see where it's obtained from some epics are obviously more common than others, but open world dungeons for me seem to drop a lot of epics. Keep in mind though guys, you need those abyss contract tokens in order to enter these dungeons and get loot to drop from those enemies. Doing contracts, any contract will give you these uh, abyss contract tokens, so yeah, keep that in mind. The abyss contract tokens are also a vitally important material for the next chapter of what you should do once you reach a level 50. And that is guys, leveling up your armor, weapons, accessories and skills. So as you progress the game, you get quite a few of these growth books and growth stones. But the ones we talk about today guys, are more or less the end game ones you are looking for. Those are the precious variants of weapon growth stones, accessory growth stones, armor growth stones, the precious active skill growth books, the precious passive skill growth books and also the precious omnipotence skill growth books. All are absolutely vital in regards to leveling up your gear and your skills. Now in my opinion the best way to get these once you run out of ideas is by crafting them. So yes we will look at ways, well easy ways, efficient ways for you being able to craft those uh, precious armor growth stones, the precious weapon growth stones, the precious accessory growth stones, uh, the precious active skill growth books and passive skill growth books as well as the precious omnipotent skill growth books. So for the precious armor growth stones you need one precious magic powder, one precious stalen ore and one precious polished crystal. For the precious weapon growth stones you need two precious magic powder, one precious rubrics ore and one precious polished crystal. For the precious accessory growth stones you need one precious magic powder, you also need one precious emerald ore and one precious polished crystal. For the precious active and passive growth books these require five precious parchments and one precious marined ore. So yes the two growth books are more or less crafted from the same mats. Now the precious omnipotent active skill growth books require uh, the precious omnipotent parchments which is the only extra material you need over the precious parchment and the precious marines or so everything we have just listed in regards to growth books and growth stones besides the precious omnipotence parchment which can only be obtained via a random drop everything else guys you can craft craft from the bomb up too so everything has a quality and rare version even the parchments too as well as the magic powders so magic powders is an easy method in getting what you want as long as you have that solent you can purchase white weapons from the equipment merchant for 9k gold each buying 62k worth dissolving them will give you enough magic powder to craft your way up to precious magic powder simple as that but in regards to everything needed for growth stones and growth books the best places to farm are those open world dungeons here you get an abundance of gear like armor weapons which you dissolve gives you magic powder doesn't matter the quality it all works its way up 
you also get tons and I mean tons of that ore. These again have all qualities from precious down to quality, again they all craft their way up. You even get precious polished crystals too. And parchments guys, you get them by the bucket load. You even get precious omnipotence parchments, which is a bit more of a rarer drop but it's definitely the best place you should indeed be farming to get these. So again guys, trigger some of those allied resistance forces contracts, go into your local open world dungeon and farm the heck out of it and you get a ton of materials that are vital in regards to leveling up and crafting vital materials. But again, keep in mind abyssal contract tokens are needed in order for you to get loot from open world dungeon enemies. If you've got none, you can't get them dropped. Now another way to get ores and polished crystals are via the Watchers Post contract manager as I mentioned earlier. He offers contracts which can drop 10 plus of the polished crystals too. More ore can be obtained from the Allied Resistance Forces contracts which is also mentioned multiple times. Uh, these again you do them within the open world dungeons and you get a ton of materials. Just more or less refresh them till you get the ore that you need for that specific thing you're chasing and you are good to go. They can also guys do the Tade or Tower, Allied Resistance Forces contracts. So these give you also vital materials and potions which will no doubt help you in your progression. But in regards to leveling up your gear or getting materials to do so, it's massively important for you to hold your own in true end game. I mean, I could tell you to jump straight into those level 50 dungeons, which, I mean, once you've leveled up and got a few epic weapons and armors, these are definitely the places you should be aiming for. But I feel upon you doing this straight away, as soon as you hit a level 50, if you ain't geared to it, you're going to have a hard time for the most part. And it's why I want you to make a guard and things you can do straight away once you hit a level 50. 50, which really ain't going to turn you off in getting things done because facing off against that harder contract when you ain't ready for it can be a true pain in the ass but yes your best bet in getting that in-game gear is the level 50 dungeons dynamic events world bosses and so forth yes these are all available upon you hitting a level 50 that doesn't necessarily mean you should jump straight in to them. Progress in other ways first which is what I did, I can now hold my own in my scenarios this game does indeed offer. So yes this is what I feel you should be doing once you hit a level 50, I mean yes I've made plenty of other guides on things you should be doing but they're more dedicated towards players that are already way past the level 50 and on their way towards their end game gear. I have by the way made a video on all ways to get epic gear in the game which you may indeed want to look at and check out. I'll link it in the video description if I remember, if I don't guys you'll find it on my channel. This more or less states from the bottom to top and where you can get epic gear in this game. Every single method the game does indeed offer. Now if you've reached a level 50 and understand the progression this game offers but you want to learn more about what side goals you can do, uh, which you can complete, I mean there are the lithograph book, the exploration codex fishing and so much more you can sink your time into which at the same time will reward you plentiful of decent items uh, which are very useful in regards to progression but if you're beyond that point guys if you want to work your way up into progressing your character to get straight into that end game content, do what I mentioned today guys and should be there in no time at all. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.